Hi, Monty Pal here on behalf of G1 Oncology Now. Today we're going to be talking about updates in kidney cancer with three of my dear friends. We're going to start with a quick round of introductions, beginning with you, Christina. Hi, I'm Christina Suarez. I'm a medical oncologist at Bideburn Hospital in Barcelona, Spain. Dan? Hi, folks. Dan George from Duke. I'm a GU medical oncologist and happy to be part of the panel. Awesome. Brad? Yeah, and I'm Brad McGregor, also a GU medical oncologist from Dana-Farber in Boston. Awesome. Well, different parts of the world here. Monty Powell from Los Angeles, California, and we're going to dive right in. And I'm going to shift gears to another controversial topic. Um, you know, we've, we've all probably had some discussions around adjuvant therapy, right, over this past year or two. Um, and, you know, let's just assume for sake of discussion that adjuvant therapy is sort of the standard with, with pembrolizumab or IO, you know, for high-risk patients. We're starting to see these patients now, aren't we, who have adjuvant therapy with pembro and actually progress beyond that. So I wanted to have a first-line discussion, but now in kind of the post-adjuvant setting, if you will. Um, so, so let's envision a patient first, Brad, who has maybe T3 grade 4 disease, right, goes on to adjuvant pembrolizumab and progresses, let's say, at the two-year mark following adjuvant therapy. How would you consider that patient's frontline approach? Yeah, I mean, this is really an area we, we sort of are hoping we know what we're doing, right? Because I mean, right, we don't have any right. great data to guide this therapy. I think overall we sort of say, you know, if you got adjuvant immunotherapy for a year and had a year disease-free interval, that would imply that maybe the immunotherapy is actually doing something and maybe just didn't have enough. So actually, if those patients have over a six-month treatment-free interval, I sort of would imagine that they're sort of treatment naive and sort of go mm -hmm. about that approach. And some of the trials support that, yeah. the ongoing trials. Yeah. If you had, if it's been over six months since your adjuvant setting, over six months, you could sort of enroll. Um, so in that situation, over a year, I don't know, I'm, I'm inclined to think about an immunotherapy-based approach um, around which one, IOIO, IOTKI, I think. Yeah. What do you think, Dan? Is that a yeah, good I, was, line I mean, I do, you know, a couple questions. I mean, would you consider that patient a favorable risk or an intermediate <laughs> risk? Because they, they had a year plus of therapy, right? Because right? yeah. that Pembro sticks around a while. And, and now they're progressing relatively shortly after mm -hmm. discontinuing the Pembro exposure. So we don't know. Right. We don't know that natural yeah. history and what that is. So, you know, to me, you know, I, you know, I, I think you could you could treat them either way. Right. Is, is the bottom line. And as they're but they're most likely going to be low volume because we've been following these patients and their disease yeah, that's a good is going to be relatively low volume. So I think of it as a favorable risk setting. You could watch them if it's really low volume and slow. If it's multiple sites, you know, I think you could start therapy. And if it's a single site of disease, I think you could think about, you know, a single site of, of local treatment at least one time. So, you know, that's the way I would sort of think about that patient population and, and, and managing them uh, based on the volume of disease, the number of sites, and, um, and really whether or not I think of them as intermediate or favorable. But you wouldn't consider this to be an IO failure, given that it's been over a year. I think that's the key. I don't actually the think there are any IO failures. So, and, and I'm not trying to, like, you know, kind of be controversial here, but mechanistically, IO therapy isn't targeting the cancer, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, so the cancer is not becoming okay. resistant to IO. Mm -hmm. It's just that our immunothera our immun immune it's system is not, is not recognized. It needs right. something else. Yeah. So to me, I think of IO therapy as contextual. Mm -hmm. Sometimes two IOs, you know, one, you know, complementing yeah. the other is the right context. Sometimes adding a TKI and having that response and that effect on the immune cells is the right context. Sometimes it might be, you know, after radiation or after surgery, and there's an inflammatory recovery response, and that's the right context. Whatever, you know, whatever setting, it's different. And so to me, even these refractory settings, these re-challenges, it's, they're contextual. And as long as you're changing the context, I think it's reasonable to consider IO in that setting. So I'll, I'll push you a little bit further sure. there, Dan. You know, so this patient, again, progressed on pembrolizumab. We won't call them an IO failure, given, given your stance okay. there. Previously but treated. Previously yeah. treated. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. There you go. You know, what's the dogma going to be in the future for a patient like this? Are we going to approach them with IO, IO on rechallenge or TKI, IO, right? Because it really is a matter of perspective. Yeah. You could either yeah. say they, they're an IO responder or maybe they need that boost from a TKI. See, I think this is where we're going to need some data, right? And I think yeah. where that's going to come, it's going to be hard to write those trials because there's such variation in, yeah. you know, adjuvant use and the timing of recurrence and all this stuff. I think it's going to come from real-world experiences, doing, you know, prospective collection of patients with metastatic disease or, 
or post, you know, these adjuvant settings. I mean, having an adjuvant registry yeah. to be able to see what are the ultimate outcomes of these patients and what happens when we retreat. These would be the real value of doing yeah. that kind of work. But SANS registry and so forth, Christina, tell us your perspective. How might you treat this patient? So I think uh, the, the key is what you mentioned, like the time since they progress. So for me, um, something like made sense is six months, like you mentioned, but the, the, the sick task force, the, the immunotherapy experts put the, um, uh, the time point in 12 weeks, which for me is a little bit short, mm -hmm. to consider a patient refractory or not to immunotherapy. Yeah since they finish the or adjuvant or, meta, or in the adjuvant or in the metastatic setting, which 12 weeks is kind of short for me, I don't know. But um, I think for me, in my mind, it's still the six months, like other two months. Um, if the patient progresses after six months, or I don't know what, what to do it. If a patient progresses after one year, for me, it's like, for me, it's like immunotherapy. I could consider immunotherapy naive. Okay. And, be in first line in the in the first line um, situation again, and had I would have the same um, doubts that in another patient in first line because at the end of the day, the immunotherapy did something if the patient were, like was uh, at, uh, without disease for one year. So I don't know. I think that the important thing it's like when when are you going to consider resistant to immunotherapy? Also, as you. I, I like very much your, your comment, like the, you are not targeting the tumor, so resistant to, to what, right. yeah. in fact. And I don't know if we can ex we will be able to extrapolate data from the TNE one, the contact 03 trial to the adjuvant setting or not, because it's a different situation. The microenvironment is different when you are not metastatic. Or, so I don't know if it's going to be a good idea to extrapolate the data from Fair this enough. trial. So, so now a scenario for you, Brad, that's tougher still, or, or maybe not, maybe not. So let's say this is a patient that actually progresses while on adjuvant pembrolizumab. What should we do there? We're, you know, we've all participated in the mm -hmm. studies. We're seeing these patients, right? Mm -hmm. So, so what do you think? Patients on adjuvant pembrolizumab starts having tumor growth. What are you going to treat them with? I mean, I think that that is a tougher question. I mean, and I think that gets the same question facing the metastatic setting, right? Do we continue the IO or not? Because in this situation, like you're growing yeah. while on a checkpoint inhibitor, right? right? So you have that instead of growing. Um, I think. I, I would say I maybe could extrapolate more from Tenebo 2 and Contact 3 to that situation, although it's unclear. Okay. Um, I think, again, I don't think there's a right answer. You could add a TKI to the Pembro and continue that and hope that maybe there's some 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 rescue of the immunotherapy. What response. are you doing right now? You saw this patient in clinic. What are you going to offer them? So I have done both. I've added to guide to Pembro and I've switched to Calo. Okay. Okay. So you can do anything. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Fair enough. I mean, it's, it's reasonable. I mean, I think that there are many, many options for a patient. And it's really driven by the patient, right? I mean, the yeah. pa there's patients who the patient has can drive that discussion. There's some patients who are, you know, they're, you, they're hold on hope that, that that immunotherapy, they know that immunotherapy social durability is so they hold on hope for that. Another patient, like, this isn't working. I don't want to get IV anymore. I'll do a pill. And so. Yeah, yeah. The, th the thing is, that, or it's clear for me is that that patient needs a TKI. I don't know if in monothera right, exactly. monotherapy or in combinations, but if you see the data of Titan, Omnivore, or the HCRN trial, right. using EP in this in this setting, it's not going to be a good strategy. So uh, the only thing I think we all agree is that the patient needs a TKI, yeah. and mm -hmm. then in combination or not, who knows? And I think some of it depends on how they're tolerating it, right? Mm, I mean, yeah. if they're doing beautifully yeah. on that and they're comfortable and I could just yeah. add the TKI, it's tempting, you know, to just do that. But you but would add the TKI or you would change the IO as well? Again, if they're tolerating it well, I'm, I'm less likely to change it, you yeah, know, because so I want to see. And, you know, then if they don't respond or, you know, there's resistance or progression, then I'm kind of making a bigger wholesale change. But, you know, for the patient that has like kind of, you know, early, again, low volume, asymptomatic disease that I'm picking up on scans, right. tolerating the Pembro well, maybe I'm adding, because I don't necessarily see that as, again, resistance. I see it as I haven't engaged mm -hmm. the IO therapy yet. Yeah, and, how do we and, do that? And adding a TKI to the IO, it makes lots of sense um, in the, because they are synergistic, they are changing the environment. So maybe you can, um, push the, the effect of the IO when you, when you are introducing the TKI mm -hmm. again. So mm -hmm. maybe the immunotherapy can work better with the TKI. Sure. And the dance point, sometimes I've had like oligo progression on adjuvant IO, so I'll do SBRT or something at that site and hope that we get some other effect there, right? So right. for those low volume thing, I mean, again, you, you say in the 
and that when they weren't an IO, you would think about surgery in that situation, radiation. So I still have that same mindset. I'm like, oh, let's do local control to this single one or two sites, and like they would just continue the IO. Ah, yeah, I happens. do a lot of that. Yeah, we we could probably keep talking about this for another three hours. This is a great topic.